Welcome back all of you, Nana here. And then in this session, uh, we are going to see about the role customization actually. So in fact, what happens a role customization is a laborious process here to go search, search deep and then uh, identify and then uh, uh, remove whatever you don't want, fine. So I'm not going to take uh, three examples, fine, for role customization. The other ones you only have to try on a similar fashion actually. Let's go there. Let me go on and share my screen. <clears throat> So here, uh, I will now explain the scenario which we face in our in this thing. If you go to the inventory management, if you go then click on it, here what happens? You are having on the consigned inventory, fine. Create transfer to owned, fine. That means what? The consigned inventory works as what? Uh, only when you transfer to owned, then it becomes eligible for a payment to the customers. So it's the best. It's an excellent just-in-time concept. And then uh, with this, what happens? We can very well do. <clears throat> but this one, you want to transfer back to consigned. It had issues. In fact, what happens? Uh, we were uh, uh, working on uh, what happens? Uh, uh, Spath Industries Bombay, where the coke is a very costly estate. So there, we had a consigned agreement with, uh, with an Australian company, and then that will be landing up on a bonded warehouse. So only when you what happens? Uh, transfer to owned, the excise invoice gets created, and then we pay the excise duty. <clears throat> so, but suppose let's say if you are drawn in excess, and then if you want to transfer back to consigned. Then what happens? We have to ask for a what happens return of the money actually, <clears throat> and then the excise appeals are really very <clears throat> what happens very difficult to what happens to convince them that uh, what happens we are now <clears throat> drawn excess and so we are returning back to the consign. So <clears throat> we had to give a lot of explanations and other things, and then uh, what happens reverse the <clears throat> excise duty actually for that much of a quantity actually. It is not easy with the government employee government officials basically. So our company has decided that what happens, we will never what happens, transfer back to the consign. Uh, once when you have owned it, fine, we will now keep it as such and then uh, what happens, we will now use it later actually. So this is uh, basically not allowed in our company. Now, fine, create transfer to consign is not allowed. So I have to what happens, remove this uh, particular activity from the menu actually, from the consign menu. menu. So this is one requirement. Fine. So create transfer to consign, I'm going to remove it now. The next requirement is what? If you go there, if you go to the count now, if you go to the count. <clears throat> In account, what happens? The person who is sitting before the inventory will be basically making the data entry actually. And then once when the entries are made upon the count, what happens? The approve count he should not do at all. Approve count sequences he is not supposed to do, as well as on the physical inventory also approve he cannot do. Only inventory in charges must have these approves. Approvals now, fine. Approve count sequences and approve physical inventories must be owned only with the inventory in charges and not by <clears throat> the or uh, the, the uh, person who is sitting in the inventory desk actually. So I have to remove this approve count in the cycle counts and then approve physical inventory from the physical inventory. So this is the second activity, right? The second activity. The third one is what we have one more problem. I know that one. <clears throat> if you go to the procurement, right? If you go to the procurement, if you go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders. <clears throat> in the purchase orders, fine. Here, if the purchase order is going to create, this is the create order, the manual order, our creation. So if you allow this manual order creation, so much of a mall practices used to happen. And then uh, when the purchase officer will say, sir, he has given over a telephone that he wants this material. And so I purchased it. And then uh, this becomes what happens, a big headache for us. And then uh, in fact, what happens, I worked for around six years in Espoth, this is Bombay. And then three purchase officers have been sacked actually because of uh, mall practices. So much of a bribe they used to take. So afterwards, the internal audit has uh, taken a very strong decision. If the uh, what happened, the order is not having any backup PR, if you are not having any backing PR, that PO should not be created at all. That means what? The onus of uh, what happens, uh, the demand <clears throat> responsibility lies on the requesting department. The mechanical department is asking for something. Right? A pump is not required. So they raise a requisition and then they get it approved. And then afterwards, uh, based upon the PR, we are going to get a PO. So if you don't have any backing PR, then PO creation should not be possible. So that what happens, uh, you can very well put the what happens the, the particular person the requesting department as the what happens the responsible for the purchases basically because uh, the main purpose of purchasing is to what reduce the spend actually spend reduction is the important one and so this was in our company what happens the manual po is not allowed at all <clears throat> so i have to remove this one fine this is for the manual po actually. pr to po will not come via this route actually that will be a different route so pr to po so man this create order and the orders should be removed fine. these are the three scenarios which you are going to see now <clears throat> So first of all, you'll now go to the placement. I'm not going to customize the role for it. <clears throat> and then uh, you have to, what happens, uh, study, study, and then do it now, fine. It is not a very easy task, fine. Go to the tools. And then I go to the security console. So I will now start with the consigned inventory management. Fine. Go to the roles. 
I will now query the inventory manager. Inventory manager role. Fine, let me query it. And then when you're querying it, what happens is always go for the aura now. And then in the aura, what happens is you go there and then choose this now. Inventory manager or a job. Fine job. And remember, we can only associate your job role to the user and not a duty role actually. Fine. So I'm now using the aura. Fine. Click on it. I'm now having a look at it. Okay. Fine. So I'm now going to open it up. <coughs> and then here, what happens in the left hand side, I drop down and then click on the edit mode. So I'm going to edit. So once when edit it, what happens is you go to the role hierarchy. In the edit mode, whatever, go to the role hierarchy. And then here, I will now query for the consigned inventory. Consigned, I'm now going to query. So we have consigned inventory management as a duty role, and then one, one for the, what happens, the report picking. OBI is for the report. Fine, don't go for the OBI at all. So we'll now take a copy of it. We will now query this role. Now. So this is having a hierarchical role, actually. Fine. So this role, we will now query. It's a duty role, actually. We'll not take a copy of it. I'm going to want it. And take a couple of it and then we'll now query the consigned inventory management. Cancel it and then go there. Paste it now. Right? Consigned inventory management. So if you see this is the OBA one, don't choose it and then choose the duty only. The consigned inventory management of duty, I'm not going to choose. I click on it. So go there. It has no count. So you can see that it's a duty role now. <clears throat> it's a duty role. And go there. Click on it. And then if you go to the, uh, what happens, I will now first of all copy this role. Right? Consigned inventory management, I'm going to copy. Right? Click on copy role now. So let me copy it now. <clears throat> You are not going to copy and click on copy roll now. <clears throat> so we are copying it now. <clears throat> so I am going to give a name now. I will now say P01 underscore. I am now giving making a consigned one. And then the roll code must be in caps, and then there should not be any space actually. Fine, you should have a underscore. I will now say there's a capital T01 underscore. Right? So likewise, when the roll code has been given now. So the consigned inventory management, I am now given. I, you are making a consigned roll. Okay, click on next. So we are now creating a consigned, what is click on next. So I'm now copying the original one. We cannot do any edit on the original ones. Fine. Original roles, we cannot edit at all. And I'm copying it. I'm going to, I come over here now. Fine. So here on the consigned inventory, fine. I will know what happens. If you go to the role hierarchy, you will not find anything in the below. Now, fine. <clears throat> what else? Fine. Go to the function security. Now, fine. The function security. So now, uh, in the role hierarchy, this is the leaf level of hierarchy on the inventory manager, and there is nothing below this about. I will not go to the function security policies. In this bottom, I will not go to the privileges. So here, the create, transfer to consign this privilege, I'm going to remove. Oh, click on it. I will not remove it. So only create, transfer to wound must be there, but not to consign, actually. And so click on it, and I will not delete it. So this is now deleted, actually. So we are now customize this role, fine. Having removed the privilege from our T01 consigned inventory manager. So I will now go to the summary. I go to the summary. Having done this, what happens? You go there. <clears throat> I will now click on submit and close. <clears throat> I will now click on submit and close. So the process is submitted. Fine, go that model. Now we're running. <clears throat> now what I do is I will now query my inventory manager and then insert this T01 consigned inventory manager. So let me go there and then query this now. Fine. Inventory. <clears throat> Manager role. <clears throat> so the inventory manager of Aura job is there. Fine, I'm not choosing that. You know. So do not do the INV, but the Aura. Fine, I'll click on it. Let me take a copy of it. Now. The original roles cannot be customized. We only have to take a copy and then do it. Now. Go there, drop it down. I will now make a copy. Click on copy. So the copy role. So I'm not going to copy it now. <clears throat> so click on copy role. You are not going to copy it. So again, what happens? I will now say it's a T01. Underscore fine here. Whatever I will know. Put everything caps in D01 underscore fine. Everything is caps actually. So go to the next. So the inventory manager role is going to be customized. Thank you for next. So on the inventory manager role, which has been customized, fine. I will not go to the what's called functional security policy. This I am not going over there. Fine. I'm not going over there. So we have so many other things in there, but we will not go to the role hierarchy itself. I will not go to the role hierarchy. Let me insert our T01 your. What happens here? This thing. Fine. We'll now insert our T01 consigned inventory management. I will now go there. Click on add role. And then let us now insert it. So go there. It's a T01. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, you can see it's coming. So this one I'm going to add. I'm going to select it. And then here I'm going to add it. Select it and then click on add role membership. I'm now getting added. Click on what happens to close. I'm now added. Now we will now see on the consigned, the original consigned has to be removed now. I will now go there. T O N S I G N E D. Fine. I will now go and query it. Fine. Consign. I am going to query. So here you can see that what happens. Uh, 
there are two roles which are coming on the consign the inventory management fine one is the oba this is for reporting fine let me remove it now let me remove it right. delete it and then this is the normal duty now <clears throat> the consign the inventory management the long one that is for reporting actually i remove it fine. i will not keep my customer on this place and then remove this duty role also fine this duty role also i'm removing it now <clears throat> so that only my my this one this is not having a transfer back to consign is not there that privilege is not there on the, on my one now i know that one delete so we are now completed it fine well, fine so original consent has been removed and then ours has been added i will now go to the summary and then i will now save and close so click on summary and close so which automatically now completed so the process is not complete now what we are going to do is uh, we will now query our t01 inventory manager role and then we will now see what the count now fine we are going to approve the count inventory count approval actually no, no. so i will now what happens i will now uh, go there and then query or t01 now find t01 will be having all the roles actually so we had to wait for some time because the concurrent is actually running actually fine so right click and then duplicate fine the concurrent for the role creation is now running so let me have a look at it whether it got completed or not <clears throat> enter now so we had to give some time for the role to get completed actually you go to the space i can now go to the tools you go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process. So here, what it is doing is what? It is not explicitly running. It is not internally running, actually. Fine. Those two concurrents are now running for, for the role creation. It is all running in, internally. Fine. It is not explicitly running. It is internally running. Okay. Now, so, okay. By this time, what happens? It got completed, actually. I will now go to the roles again. And go to the roles again. Let me query my T01 role. Fine. T01. <clears throat> Fine. So we have an inventory manager role as well as a consigned inventory manager role. So let me query the T01 inventory manager. T01. So the consignment has been inserted in this one. Right? So go to the inventory manager. So T01 inventory manager, I'm going there. So let me go on and bring it to edit mode now. So I'm now editing it. I click on edit. So here I will now go to the role hierarchy. <clears throat> right? So we have an inventory count is there. I will now query for the count. Not right? C O U E N T count. Then I enter now. Fine. I'll now show you. Inventory count management is there. Fine. Inventory count management has got what has CM. We have one. And then normal one is there. And then what happens? That we have what happens? One more thing on the OBA also report. So inventory count management has got three things now. Fine. So let us now do this one. This is now edit now. Fine. This one I'm going to edit. Go there. I will now take a copy of the inventory count management. <clears throat> so take over it. And then cancel it and then query this. <clears throat> will now cancel it and then query this. Inventory count management. So go that one. So you can see all the three roles coming up now, fine. So we had to choose the appropriate one of ours. <clears throat> so this is the duty role, fine, inventory account management duty role. This is the OBA, fine, this is the HCM. And again, what happens, OBA is coming. <clears throat> so uh, inventory account management duty, fine. So this is the one we had to choose now, fine, inventory account management duty is the one. So this only we had to duplicate actually. <clears throat> and inventory account management duty, <clears throat> OBA is not required. And then uh, this is again, what happens, the OBA, fine, you should have same also. So this is the one appropriate one, fine, then drop it down. Okay. I will not do a copy now. I click on it. We will not make a copy of it. <clears throat> so click on the copy row. Click on copy row. Fine. Click on copy. So we are now copying it. But I will again say it's T01 underscore. And then here, what happens? The T01 underscore. So we are now given this now. Fine. Click on next. <clears throat> so the inventory count management is I'll come to this place. Fine. So you don't come over here. If you go to the role hierarchy, fine. <laughs> so you won't be finding anything. Fine. There's a leaf level of the hierarchy actually. Fine. It's okay. Okay. The role interface administration, everything is coming. Then I'll go to the functional security and then remove the privileges of approval actually. Fine. Go to the functional security manager. Functional security policies now. You go to the functional security policies. You have the privileges. So approve cycle count sequences is there. We will not remove it now. Fine. Allows approvals or rejection of cycle count sequences. Fine. Go that one. We will not delete it. So approve cycle count is now deleted. Similarly, approve physical inventory also it does not delete. So approve physical adjustments with that. Allow approve rejection of physical inventory adjustments. So go there. So select it and then click on delete. Fine. So these two approvals have been deleted actually. So click on yes. And then if there is anything relevant also, we have to delete actually. Uh, generate is there, export is there, create is there. Fine. Only approval is the only one which is required now. You know, see in the bottom. Any other approval is there. So I don't find any approval here. I find it's okay. This much is sufficient actually. So similarly, what happens is something maybe 
uh, what happens? The create psychic account may be available in some other place also. Even if you delete it, what happens? It will be allowing you to still create it actually. Because all the roles are what happens? Basically additive in nature actually. So, so if something is deleted, it may not exactly get deleted actually. So, and that's why you have to what happens? Do a lot of R and D and then do it now. So two approvals are deleted. Let me hope that these approvals are there. So I will not go there. So approval here I have deleted now. Fine. So I I find that there is one more approval. Fine. One more approval there. There also I will not delete now. <clears throat> so this is on the inventory count management. I have done now. Fine. I will not go to the summary. I will not go to the summary. <clears throat> So in the inventory count management, there is a delete. Fine, go there. So click on submit. Fine. So T01 inventory count management. Fine. Click on submit. Submit and close. No doubt. And I think there is one more place also. This approval is there. Fine. Let us not delete from that place also. So go there. So inventory count management is now customized actually. We will not go there. We will not have at one more place. No fine. Inventory manager. So let us not go to the inventory manager role. So inventory manager role is the one. Uh, inventory manager role. Fine. So we have to find out hours. No, fine. We have to find out hours. Let us now find out the T01 inventory manager role. So T01, this is the one now. Fine. Click on it. So here I will now go on and try to edit directly. Click on it. Now go to the edit mode. So we'll now see there is approval in one more place. Now fine. Go to the role hierarchy. <clears throat> we'll now see there is one more place. The approval is also there. Fine. Click on it. We'll now see. Approval. Fine. Entering. No, so inventory approval. There is a count approval. This is an inventory approval management. Let us also customize this now. So before which, what happens? First of all, let us now add our role. No, fine. We are made this. No, fine. So let us now add this. No, fine. So click on it. We will now add the role. Fine. Click on the add role. So whatever we have created custom, fine. T01. Now go there and then I will search for it. So we have what? The inventory count management. Fine. There is one inventory approval management is also there. One inventory count management is there. Fine. Let us now add the inventory count management. Role. So go there. So click on what? You go there. Click on add role membership. Fine. There is no getting added. Closing. So if you go and then query this count, now fine. Go there. Click on it. I will not. There is no save at all here. Now fine. We have to only do everything. Now fine. I will not say. Uh, I will not say. What happens? Uh, C O U N T count. If you make a query, you will not find the T zero one inventory count management is there. So the remaining count management, let us not delete now. We go to the inventory count management, let us not delete it. <clears throat> this is the one. There are three places it is there. Fine, go there. Let me delete it. <clears throat> and then go to the inventory count management. So this also will not delete it. <clears throat> and then inventory count management. Fine, go there. So our custom one is not having approvals now. Fine, the one. Fine, click on delete. So let us now complete it and then I'll come back again and then re-query it. <clears throat> This is okay. Upload data for cycle count important also okay. So what else? if you remove it, what is okay, fine. Go to the summary, fine. Go to the summary and then click on save and close by which what happens. This inventory count management removal of approval has been done. And it is available in one more place also. Thank you, it. It is available in one more place. Fine. So go to the summary and then click on save and close by which what happens. The role gets what happens. Your internal concurrent will be running. A JES job will be running for what happens, creating this custom role actually. So initially, we created a custom role for the consigned inventory. Now, for the count, we are in the process of creating it, actually. <clears throat> Go there. So we'll now complete it. Then we have one inventory approvals management also is there. So that also will know what happens. Remove the approvals. Actually. So you may have to have what happens. Remove the approvals everywhere, wherever it's coming. So once when you do it, what happens? It will be doing it. <clears throat> the role changes the saved. Actually, and click on OK. Now, what happens? We go there and then I will now again edit it now and click on it. Now. So T01 inventory manager, fine, click on it. And then and then we'll now edit the role and then identify one more thing on this now. Fine. I will now go to the role hierarchy. I will now go to the role hierarchy and go there. I will now say approval. So here inventory approval management is also there. So let us now open now. Fine. So this one, let me take a copy of it and then query this role. There is a duty role actually. Then give a cancel and then we'll now query. So a job role can have multiple duty roles. A duty role can also have multiple duty roles below. Fine, there's a big hierarchy actually. So paste it and then here, whatever you go there and then query for it. So inventory approval manager, this is the one. Vora is there, fine, choose it. Let us now take a copy of it. Now, fine, we'll not we'll take a copy of it. So copy the role, fine. It is for inventory approval management. Fine, that is the account management, is the inventory approval management. So T01 underscore. So here also, whatever you go there, put it fine. The capital T zero one underscore. So, fine, click on next. <clears throat> so if you go to the role hierarchy, 
if you go to the role hierarchy, nothing is there. Fine, the leaf level of a, uh, what happens of the hierarchy actually. I will not go to the functional security policies. Fine, brother. If you go to the functional, so approve he is also there now. So let us now remove the approve one now. Fine, uh, approve cycle count sequences and then approve physical inventory also. So even it balances also can be what happens uh, removed actually. I don't know how to what happens uh, uh, enable the inventory balance approvals actually. Fine, maybe some other module. So let us now remove these two things also. Mm -hmm. I'm not very sure, but uh, we have to do it or not. But uh, it is appearing in multiple places, and so what happens? I'm moving it. Up to cycle consequences, fine. Let us delete it. We are deleting it. Fine. This is only you have to what happens the time and then understand. And then once when you have identified this is the way you have to do it for every role customization, you have to record in your books basically. So later on, when, when such a requirement comes, what happens? You have to customize in the same way. Approve physical inventory, click on delete. So, it not so on the inventory approval, also what happens? We done it. Fine. You go to the summary. And then submit and close. So your process is submitted. Fine. Click on OK. Now what happens? We go there and then we will now query our T01 custom role. Fine. So wait for some time. Fine. The monitor. What happens? It is all happening internally and in the backend actually. But nothing is what happens happening in the printed actually. So let us now wait for some time. Now. After waiting for some time, what happens? I will now go and then query my T01 inventory manager. T01. Go there. I will now call my T01 inventory manager. So we first initially customize the consigned inventory, then uh, inventory count management, and then inventory approval management. So this one I'm going to insert it into my inventory manager. Now, right? Inventory approval management we have to insert it. So you will now go to the man inventory manager. So I will not, what happens, you go there, you will not come now, fine, that point. So go there and then edit the role. So T01 inventory manager, I'm going to edit it. I will now go to the role hierarchy directly. <clears throat> So here I will now what happens go and then add this one fine. Go to the add and then I will now put T01. Fine, T01. It is the inventory approvals management. Inventory approval management. I'm going to add now. We'll select it and then click on add role. So close this now fine. It will now query for the what happens uh, inventory approval. <coughs> inventory APP. I'm going to query now. Enter it. So inventory approval. So T01 is there, fine. Inventory approval management is only one entry now. <clears throat> so let us now delete it. Inventory approval management. So click on delete. <clears throat> it is now deleted. The hours is only there. I'll again query now, fine. Uh, we have seen many now, fine. I and B inventory, I don't query for it now, fine. Inventory approval, anything is there, I'm not, not seen. Inventory transactional duty, fine. Inventory count management is there. Uh, Go down, go down. <clears throat> Inventory, what happens? Approvals management is there. I don't find anything else there. Inventory manager. <clears throat> so approvals management has got only one now. Only in the count, I think we had some three or three entries or something. So here, and nothing else is there. Fine. What is the inventory approvals has been customized and then added. Okay, now fine. I will now go to the summary and then save it. So my inventory manager is having customized fine consigned inventory management and then inventory approvals management and then count management. Mm -hmm. So on. So these are the three customized roles which have been added to my customized inventory manager role. Click on the summary and then save and close. You're saving and closing. So by which what happens? The role changes have been done. Now for the purchase order, what happens? We have one buyer role. Mm -hmm. So click on the buyer role. Buyer is a role. I will not choose the Ora buyer. Ora buyer job actually. And the job role. Ora buyer, I'm going to choose it. So the one now fine. Go to click on it. I will not go to the edit role. Remember, the original roles cannot be edited on. And here, if you go to the role hierarchy. So here, there is one purchase order authoring will be there. There is one purchase order authoring. Fine. So the purchase order authoring facilitates you not to create a PO without a backing PR actually. Fine. Go there, go down. Purchase order authoring. <clears throat> I will not query on this. <clears throat> purchase and then enter. So you will not see purchase order authoring. Purchase agreement authoring is coming. So we will not see purchase order authoring. I will not say space AU. Fine. Enter now. Fine. Oh God, I'm not connecting. Is coming. Purchase. Purchase order authoring. Agreement authoring is coming. Fine. Um, purchase order administration is there. Go there. And then uh, we have to have the authoring now. Go uh, not, we'll not go for AUTHO. AUTHO. 
authoring so now sorry for it right so we have purchase agreement authoring and this is a purchase order authoring so let us now customize this row now is again on an oba remember so okay you can take anything and then while doing it we had exactly do it now so the purchase order authoring so the purchase order authoring let me take a copy of it now i have now give a cancel and then let us now query it no problem in purchase order authoring of not of oba but uh, the normal one mm -hmm. so give a cancel and then what happens you come back to the main screen and then from that you query for the purchase order authoring and then we are going to customize that role actually <clears throat> so that role will be customized now so we long give a cancel and now come back to the original one now so let us now paste on the main role the purchase order authoring so let us now choose the appropriate one now so the oba should not choose now fine the normal one only had to choose now. purchase order order authoring duty fine normal one you choose it now and that let us now take a copy of it actually the purchase order i am not going to take a copy of it and now come and drop it down and then i will not or so copy the role <clears throat> this is a purchase order authoring role and click on copy role so we are going to copy it actually the copy top role we are going to copy now so i will again say what happens is this is going to be t01 underscore so here also what i'm going to go there the capital t01 underscore and click on next so you know customizing this uh, purchase order authoring uh, role actually authoring duty duty role actually the duty role which are customizing it and remember duty roles cannot be associated to user only job roles can be associated to user so it doesn't be put into your job role actually finally after customization let go there and then in the role hierarchy if you see it what happens it won't be having any big one now fine so it will be having it is a leaf level of a hierarchy actually so go to the functional security policies and then straight away what happens modify the privileges actually if you go to the role hierarchy if you go to the role hierarchy what happens you won't find anything big there actually in this place <clears throat> right nothing is there so you go to the functional security policy and then here what happens you now see that people create purchase order there is one what happens the privilege called create purchase order so this privilege what you do is what allow a procurement agent to create a purchase order <clears throat> without a backing pr requisition actually and update the purchase order with or without backing requisition lines fine if you have this we can very well create a po without a backing pr actually if we remove it then the create purchase order that one will be the entry itself will be removed actually so this privilege we are removing it from purchase order authoring actually similarly for the agreement authoring also we can do it somewhere will be there <clears throat> so let us now remove the create purchase order so it says allow a procurement agent to create a po without a backing pr actually <clears throat> So remove it. Fine. That means what? Without a backing PR, you cannot do it. Go that point. Delete. I'm deleting it. So this purchase create purchase orders removed. Actually, that particular privilege has been removed. Now we'll now go to the summary and then we'll now what happens? Is save it actually. So click on submit and close by which what happens? A, a custom T01 purchase order authoring is now done. Now let us now go and then query your buyer actually. Buyer also we had to customize it. No thing. So let us now query the buyer. So go there buyer. So we are the original one. We cannot do anything at all. For a job, I am not choosing it. So let us now copy the buyer role into a new one. <clears throat> so over a one. All right. Well, I click on it. Fine. So drop it down, and then here, what I will now copy a role. So click on copy now. Fine. The buyer role, I am copying it now. <clears throat> well, so I will now put what T zero one underscore here also. What I will now put what. P zero one underscore. So I think it's done. And click on next. So we are doing the next now. And click on next. You go inside now. In the buyer role. What happens? You go to the role hierarchy directly. In the role hierarchy, we will be having on purchase order authoring. So we'll now insert ours and then remove that. Okay. So that way we are doing it now. So we'll now go to the role hierarchy directly. So once when you are given the name, it's fine here. It has, it has been caps basically, and then there should not be any spaces basically. Underscore is allowed, but space is not allowed actually. So I will now go to what the role hierarchy now. Click on the role hierarchy. So in the role hierarchy, if you go on and see, I am now going to insert our what I'm the purchase order authoring one day. Find the purchase order authoring. I will be inserting it over there. Click on the role hierarchy, and then there I will now insert ours, and then remove the original because our purchase order authoring is not allowing us to create any manual PR PO author. So here, 
I will now go and then query for the purchase order authoring now. Purchase and then entering. So the purchase order authoring. So is that is coming now. I will now remove this now. I'm going to comment. Let me delete it. So the purchase order authoring is now deleted. And then let me insert mine. And then let us now insert mine actually. Click on add row. And then here. I will now put the T01. Let me insert my T01 purchase order authority. So by which this is now a customized rule where the create order will not be there at all if a person particular user is having it. So we can even give this customized rule to all the purchase officers if your company policy is not to create a PO without a backing PR actually. It all depends upon what they want. You have to make a lot of warranty and then see how many levels of hierarchy there and then go to the privileges and then which one you want to remove. So accordingly, I'll do it now. Go there. So this is the one now. I purchase order authoring. Go there. Choose it. Select it and then click on add role membership. So by which it gets added actually. Close it now. So if you go there and then query your T01. So maybe having only one available. So go to the summary and then you will now save it actually. So the buyer role. The T01 buyer role, which is having a customized T01 purchase order authoring, is not getting submitted for us. So the role customization is now complete now. And then again, what happens? You go there and then wait some time. And then before we create our user, actually, okay. it's all done. So let us know what happens. You go to the home icon, you find, come out of the roles creation, actually. And then let me create a user now. <clears throat> let me create a user. So go there. I will now click on the name and then you go to the setup and maintenance. Mm -hmm. So go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, I will now go to the manage users and then it has now created user. So I am now going to create a, what happens a transactional legal user actually. Fine. So who is responsible for all these activities? So all supply chain managers, supply chain users must be created via this. Manage users is the one. You go on and query for it now. I go on and click on it. So let me create a user actually. Click on plus. <clears throat> so here I'm now going to give a last name and then first name and then an email ID and then make him as an employee and then provide. What happens? I go there. The EMP one. If I go there, is the T zero one underscore, and then the email. I'm not going to put our T zero one <coughs> underscore. Find EMP one at the rate gmail dot com. It will be unique one, and so whatever I'm putting it like this. Man. So here, username is what I will now say T zero one underscore EMP one. What? And the person type is employee. I'm not making the employee. Work. So here he is now going to associate, get associated with the what happens your visions structure actually. So the LE will be US one now. Fine. LE will be US one. US one is the LE. The business unit is also US one. So if a user is having an association to LEBU, he is considered as a legal user. He is fit for all the supply chain transactions. So if we have a HR a job now. Fine. I'm not putting it. Job is in fact a very important one. The department is Hong Kong. I will not put now. We have one ready-made Hong Kong available in the mission actually. So let me go there and then put that Hong Kong actually. <clears throat> That's it. Fine. Go there. By which what happens? The user, the legal user is now getting created. Click on save and close. When T01 EMP1 is now getting created. So once when the user is created, we will now assign our customized role to him actually. <clears throat> now we will know the user is now created. I will now click on the home icon. And then I go to the tools and then go to the security console. I go to the tools and then I go to the security console. So in the security console, let me go to the users and then query the user. And then we will now associate the appropriate roles actually. So the user will be associated only the job role and not a duty role. Right? Both the buyer is a job role as well as your inventory manager is also a job role. So these two roles I am going to associate to this user actually. I will now click on the users. Let me query my user. The T01. 
and the header in open. So we have a T01 EMP1 user has been created. So a legal user we have created. Thank you. Let us know first of all, reset the passwords actually. The password is now getting reset actually. So go there. Manually I will not reset it now. So the password is now getting reset manually. And then I will now edit and then add the roles. Just to check only the customize the role actually. Remember that when you're having multiple roles, one functionality may be available in multiple places basically. Fine, that is another problem for you. Identify everywhere and then remove those. Now. Fine. So one even then what happens, it will now become fully operational actually. Click on the edit now, find the password has been reset actually. I click on edit and then click on add role. So the two roles, our T01 inventory manager and then the buyer, we are going to add. Inventory manager is the customized one. I click on it. And then click on add. So the remaining are job roles, so they won't come here at all. So job roles will not, the duty roles will not be coming. What is the job roles will come? T01. So these are the only job roles, fine. Buyer, I'm adding it. So we are now done the consigned inventory and then approvals and all fine error duty roles. So duty roles will not get listed at all. You cannot associate to the employee at all. I'm going to click on it. So click on add role. I'm sorry, then click on add role. So by which what happens that we are now added testing for testing process, we added these two. So don't give too many because if you give employee, employee also will go so many other things now fine. So it will be coming. So we had to only think, think and then do it appropriately. So click on save and close by which whatever the user is now created. So once when the user is created, we will now run the import user role on data now. Fine. That will now sync all the setup information to the transactional systems now. Fine with that. So we'll now wait for the user to get created now. So once it is created, we will now run the import user role. Now. So it is now saved actually. Fine. Click on done now. So once you give it done, fine. We're all completed actually. So now we will now go to the monitor process and then we will now click on the submit new process and then it will now run the import user role. So that will be basically syncing all the setup data into the transaction systems actually and go there. And then it will now run the import user role actually. Now write what? Import user percentage, role percentage and then give it time. Import user role is the one. So let us now run it. So click on OK and then click on Submit. So let us now wait for this concurrent to complete now. Fine. Ending in 754 actually. Refresh it. You know, show it is now in a wait status. Fine. It will not run. So it may take some longer time actually. Fine. I'm going to go there and then just to come to the ready state now it's ready and then it will not start. Running. So wait for it to complete and then run one more concurrent called the LDAP. Now. <clears throat> it's now ready. Then let it get completed actually. So after some time, whatever it will be coming into the running status actually, fine. It is now coming to the running status. So wait for it to complete. So sometimes whatever it may even take more than five minutes. Now fine. You have to wait till it gets completed. The import user role is still running. So probably it might have completed it because of so many other things. Whatever is still running actually. So after it gets completed, whatever you go to the schedule, new process, and then run the LDAP also. <clears throat> Even though they are not required, fine, they are all basically to force sync your setups into the transactor systems. But the system has got an inbuilt mechanism to sync everything in a, in a what happens in a periodic interval actually. <clears throat> we run this also. Because since we want to see the results immediately, we are running it actually. Otherwise, if you leave it for one hour or two hours, then what happens? It gets auto synced actually. And you click on it now. It's also running. <clears throat> So it's also running. So make it a habit. What happens when you go into the field? What happens? You do it, and then after two hours only, you'll be able to what happens to see the real results of it of the customization. Actually, it won't take some time. So this is also running now. Fine. So in the meantime, we'll now go on and test whether it is all implemented or not. Fine. Go there. I will not take a copy of this now. Fine. Not take copy. I'll not take it. I'll now go to another browser actually. So let me open up another browser. <clears throat> So go there. So I will now open up the document. I will now paste this name. Here's <clears throat> you. So we are now just now created a user called T01 underscore EMP1 with a password. Fine, let us now sign it. This is a legal user which you have created. So click on sign it. <clears throat> and then click on the home icon. 
Now, uh, very near to it, we are having the procurement now. Fine. Go to the procurement and then you go to the purchase orders. Go to the procurement and then click on the purchase orders. So once when you give the purchase orders, fine, go there, click on it. And then here, what happens? You cannot see. The create purchase order will be missing, actually. If you click on this task list, fine. Manage is there, generate is there, import is there, but create is missing. So that means what? Manual creation of a PO is not allowed, but PR to PO is very much possible. So this customization is working now. So click on the home icon, fine. It is not completed. You will now go to the supply chain execution, then go to the inventory management. Right? Click on the inventory management. You're going to have a look at the inventory management. So here, transfer back to consigned should not be on at all. So if you click on the task list and then go there, here is the create transfer to owned is there, but create transfer back to consigned is not there. So that is gone actually. When the create transfer to consigned is gone. When on the consigned inventory, we cannot do it. When in our company, the very strict one, or you cannot create a transfer to consigned actually <clears throat> because of uh, so many restrictions, we uh, disallowed it. So the end user has to appropriately do it. When if you draw excess, then what happens? Uh, we have to keep it now. Fine. You should not draw excess. Fine. That should be the internal control actually. Now we will now go to the count. Now fine. The count, the approvals must be missing actually. Fine. Go to the counts. Now fine. Click on the counts. You can now see no approvals are available on the cycle count as well as in the physical inventory. So both are got removed now. So this is the way we can customize it now. Fine. Each and everything, what happens? You have to think, think, and then do it now. Fine. It may not be working immediately actually. Fine. You may have to remove that uh, particular privilege or the role itself from many, many places, basically, if it doesn't work. So once when it works, what you have to do is you have to take a notes. Fine. This is how I customized a particular role. So once when you do it, then afterwards, that will become a record for you. And later on in the future projects, whenever you have to customize the role, you can immediately open up your notes and then what happens? You can even do it accordingly. <clears throat> so this is a customization of what? Uh, uh, removing the approvals from the cycle count and then remove the transfer to consigned on the inventory and then uh, removing the create orders on the purchasing. <clears throat> right. So bye for now. And then likewise, you make small R&D here and there and then you'll be able to understand a lot of things also. And whenever you make any customization successful, then what happens you note down the way in which you have done it and that will be very useful for you. Right. Because some customization may not exactly immediately work because there are so many, what happens there, uh, uh, telescopic uh, uh, roles which are there. So if you remove one role, some other role will be giving you the permission actually. So that particular portion may not be removed actually. So you have to only think, think and then do it now, fine. wherever you are coming at and go down and then search in the hierarchical levels and then see which role is causing what and then according to it. So this is a, basically a good introduction about how to customize a role. Fine. So with this, what happens, you can do wonders also. My students have done a lot of things now, fine. they have uh, customized a lot and then uh, uh, they know much more than what I know. Fine. So this gives you what happens, a procedure to what happens, go on and do the customization of a role. Bye for now. Namaste.